Today we're going to take you through all the details of a neck install. Stay tuned. Hey listen up guys, we're at the stage of the game in this guitar build where we're almost done putting together this guitar. I have the final product here, but I'm still showing you step by step all of the steps involved to finalize this guitar anatomy kit that we have here and the, the body and the neck came from Guitar Anatomy as well as the pickups and some other miscellaneous hardware. Uh, so I'm going to show you how we accurately install the neck on the guitar today. It might seem like it's a simple straightforward thing, but there's actually quite a bit involved if you want to do a good job and make sure everything is aligned properly, including your pickups, the pick guard and all the other miscellaneous hardware here because they're all dependent on a good accurately installed straight neck. So I'm going to show you step by step how I do that in this video. If you want to watch the other videos in this series, click on my previous videos because they're all there. So let's jump right into the uh, neck install. We'll jump over to my messy workbench and we'll get started. Well, I'm excited because we're getting to the light at the end of the tunnel here. So now that the bridge is on, uh, this is a perfect time to dry fit the pick guard, the control cavity cover, and the neck. So we're at the stage in the game right now where we're going to be installing or putting on the neck or drilling the, the holes to be able to attach the neck. Now, if your neck is very loose in the pocket, I would recommend you put the neck in and use some kind of a clamp to hold it in place when you're actually making the holes. In this particular case, this neck and this body is so well matched that um, it fits extremely snugly in here. So I'm not worried that it's going to shift. But before I do any drilling, I want to make sure that the bridge and the neck line up. And there's no better way to do that than by actually putting strings on the bridge and putting them all the way up onto the nut. This is where locking tuners come in very handy because you can actually just put them through the, um, the shaft and tighten them down while you're checking things out. So you, you don't have to actually wrap them around or anything like that. It goes a lot quicker. So what I recommend if you're going to be doing this, you know how sometimes you get these really cheap strings with these uh, Chinese guitars that you buy sometimes, they throw them in. Uh, I usually don't use the strings for anything except this. I usually take the strings, and this is a good opportunity for you to use these strings as an alignment guide here. And it doesn't really matter what strings they are, they don't have to be the high E and the low E string. If you have them still and you want to use those, that's fine, but at this point it's just basically a visual guide that we're after. So we're going to string through the highest and lowest string and we're going to sight down the neck to make sure that the neck is straight. If it is straight, we're going to drill the holes. So I'm just going to put them uh, through the back. You don't have to necessarily put them down underneath. Through the back is fine. Again, all we're trying to do is establish a straight line. This is why you never throw anything away because all this stuff comes in super handy. So I'm just going to string it through and put it on the nut here and just tighten it down a little bit. Now because the neck is not bolted on you don't want to put too much pressure because then you'll be shifting the neck I'm going to do the same for the string here, and in this case I'll just use a wound. This is a D string, but it doesn't really matter. Like I said, it's just you're just using the strings like a ruler, basically. Now, some people don't take the trouble to do all this stuff, you know, and um, they still get lucky and everything lines up, but sometimes you're not lucky. And uh, in those cases, 
it's better to check before you actually start drilling any holes. So I hope you can see what I did here. I basically took two strings, put them on the posts, lined them through the nuts, and we're basically going all the way down, 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 until we get to the bridge. And the idea here now is to sight down the neck and make sure that the strings are perfectly centered on the on the neck here. So let's shift the guitar so we can take a look down the neck. It's kind of hard to do it at this angle. So I'm giving you another point of view here. Maybe it'll be easier to, to see what's going on here. But basically what we're sighting is all the way down the neck on both sides to make sure that the strings on the fretboard are good. And also you, you can also see that the strings are lining up and it's a little hard to see because I'm so close to the pole pieces on the pick guard. So it should be pretty close to center on this side, pretty close to center on that side. And then when we look down the neck here, you want to see that the strings, and it's hard to give you a good perspective, but the strings are pretty evenly spaced on both sides. It's kind of okay to have a little bit more space between the edge of the fretboard and this string because this high E string tends to be fatter. So you need a little bit more room. And it's okay if this string is a little bit closer to the edge of your fretboard, but not you shouldn't see a drastic difference. If you see a drastic difference, there could be a problem. Okay, so the next step in the process is to be able to mark the hole locations on the neck where we're going to be able to drill the pilot holes to accept the screws that are going to hold the neck with the neck plate in place. So the best way I found to do this is to actually use, uh, just take a regular bit, all right, from a, um, you know a drill and you want it to be pretty close to the size of the hole and then if you have one that has a little sharp point on it like this one does all you really have to do is put it in the hole press down spin it a little bit to make a little point and that point is going to be where you're going to drill out for the holes now you want to make sure the neck is all the way down on the pocket that there's no gaps on the top or on the sides everything is aligned perfectly and as you can see here we have a super tight joint everything looks nice and I left the strings on here as a reference to make sure everything is perfectly aligned if the neck is not aligned you can still shift it at this point and use some clamps before you actually make the marks for the holes but in this case, I think we're pretty much good to go. So, let's just take this and press it down and spin it around a couple of times as straight as you can. And we'll do the same thing in all of the holes. So if you take the neck off at this point, you should have good indicators of where you need to drill. Now be careful when you're taking the neck on and off, especially if it's tight on the pocket. You don't want to crack anything. Take your time. Do it gently. Uh, I'm leaving the Guitar Anatomy sticker here on the back of the plate for historical reasons so I can remember where we got this really nice body from. And I highly recommend you guys check them out if you're looking at building your own kit guitar or part caster, really good parts. So I hope you can see the marks that were left by the uh, bit. We have four little dimples right over here, pretty precisely made. If you have trouble seeing them, you can always use a little uh, pencil and just, you know, make them a little bit darker. If you have failing eyesight, you can do that. Makes it a lot easier, but uh, I think I see them pretty clearly. 
All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to drill those out. So you want to use the screws that you have for the neck plate as a guide and you want to go a little bit smaller in diameter than what those screws are going to be. Because you don't want to force the neck and you don't want to make a hole that's too small because it could crack. Um, and it, you don't want to make it too big that it has nothing to grip onto. So it has to be just slightly smaller than your screw. So the trick I like to use to be able to uh, make sure I have the right size bit is I like to take the bit and hold it up against the screw and I should be able to hide the bit and still see the teeth of the screw of the screw that I'm going to be using. So if you put it in the front it's a little hard to show you like this cuz you know with the camera perspective and everything but you want it to be covering the shaft of the screw but still be able to see the teeth on the other side and this one is pretty pretty good this one will work just fine so we're gonna put this into the drill press and we're gonna make the holes on the neck alright so we're ready to make the holes uh, of course I always use a marker on my drill bit to know how deep I need to go you want to make sure you're aligned and right in the dimple before you start the drilling process so check twice drill once is like I usually like to say uh, and uh, let's do it so the neck is back on after we drilled the holes now we have our screws ready to go and uh, our neck plates here as well uh, the first thing I want to do before we try putting any of the screws in is to make sure that they're lubricated with a little bit of wax and again I use the uh, Monty's guitar instrument food for this it works very very well just give it a light coat on every every screw there a little bit goes a long way um, it's a little bit messy because it is a little greasy or, or waxy but it works well alright so now that we have the screws ready to go we're gonna take the plate and we're gonna put the screws back in the neck and again I like to do this the old-fashioned way with a regular screwdriver and not necessarily using a drill because I like to feel the pressure that I'm applying to the neck plate so I can see if the pressure is being applied equally across all four of the screws and I don't risk breaking anything in the hole. Alright so here we are uh, ready to put the neck plate on the guitar so usually I just grab it like this hold it with your fingers and put in a couple of screws in the holes not necessarily uh, tight at this point you just want to put them in to hold the plate in place and they should fit snug enough that you can't slide them in you have to screw them in at this point that's what you want to feel you want to feel a nice tight um, you know wood grabbing connection here so I'll just put these in lightly with my hands at this point and um, as we get closer and we start feeling it a little bit too tight to go in with your hands and your fingers then we'll start using the screwdriver uh, make sure you have the proper bit otherwise they'll slip 
and you don't want a mess. I'm trying to get this in the shot as best I, as I can. And you, you can see that I'm slowly tightening around. You don't want to tighten all of the screw, you know, one of the screw in all the way to begin with. You want to slowly apply even pressure across the neck plate. Be careful at this stage because it's very easy for the screwdriver to slip and make a, a, a nasty mark on the paint on your guitar. Okay, as we get closer to hitting our mark, slow down, make sure that you're aligning the neck plate so that it goes in straight. At this point I like to use a cross tightening pattern. Uh, leave the plate loose so it has enough room to move and it should find its mark so that the screws are all nice and um, nothing sticking out. As just a final little twist and we should be good to go. As you get closer you apply less and less pressure. And there we go, the neck is in place and everything looks good. So now comes the fun part guys. Now we have to align everything so we can make the pilot holes for the pick guard and the control cavity. Um, so really it's not that difficult, but you want to have a good eye. I like to use certain reference points when aligning things on a guitar like this so that I make sure um, I don't end up with a crooked pickguard. And I usually do the pickguard first, then the control cavity. Okay, so here now, I kind of um, aligned the pickguard with the bridge and the neck to make sure it doesn't move. I actually put down a bit of masking tape, and I did this before we actually put the neck on, just so things wouldn't shift. So here's what I like to align the pickguard with. I usually look at the spacing between the edge of the inside of the pick guard here and the actual edge of the bridge on both sides. I like them to be equal and I like the spacing between the bridge and the edge of the pick guard to be straight, not at an angle. And then finally, I like to make sure that the edge at the top here, the top horn of the guitar, um, all around here is even all the way across. If you get those points right, then you're in business. The pick guard will be perfectly aligned on your guitar. And then you can use that as a guide to put in the control cavity. The control cavity is not uh, put down yet, but as long as it's snug on the little uh, curve here um, and straight between the bridge so it's not at an angle, you, you should be good to go there as well. So I'm just going to tape it down temporarily. And to make these holes, again, I use my trusty hinge bit um, because that's what you need to be able to make the holes dead center on the pick guard. You don't want your, um, your, your screws to be in all crooked and wonky. So I told you this little tool would come in handy. How many times have we used it in this build? quite a few times, haven't we? And uh, this is exactly what I mean. Worth its weight in gold. Get one of these if you don't already have one. couple hidden underneath the tape here and you, that's where I also have the shielding tape. Takes a second to make these holes. I think we got all of them. Oh no, we missed this one here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're good. So we can actually put in the screws on the pickguard now. 
So I have all the screws here ready to go in. Again, I like to do these by hand. Uh, I don't typically put in any kind of uh, you know wax because these are shallow screws. Uh, don't really need them, but I like to put them in on the extremities first, and then uh, put in the rest so that they don't move. I already put this one here to anchor it down, and now I'll do the rest of them. Um, this is why I like to do things by hand sometimes. It's just because you can tell when things are being forced you know and if it's if you go with a drill and you just go too quick it'll just drill out the hole and it'll be sp spinning empty you know spinning uh, around and you'll have to fill it with a toothpick or something and glue and all that kind of stuff a uh, big pain for nothing so I rather just take my time and do it right so I hope you guys are getting something cool out of these videos um, it does take time to build a guitar and film everything the way I'm doing it right now, but I feel like it's a good step-by-step um, -step guide for you guys. And if you haven't tried it already, um, you know, just to give you the information, to arm you with the information to either do a really nice job or, or maybe mess things up real quick, depending on how you look at things. But I like to... Um, I like to try and um, once you realize that uh, building guitars is a lot of fun and uh, easy, not as, not as difficult as you think, um, you're going to be surprised how much you like the guitars you're building because they're going to be built the way you want them to be. And uh, it kind of ruins things, i got to warn you. It ruins things because when you go to a store and you pick up a guitar and you look at the price um, and then you play it you'll realize quickly that the guitars that you're building feel more at home in your hands because you built them the way you want them. Kind of like your very own custom shop build for a lot less money. Especially if you start off with good parts. And in this case, um, the parts are amazing. Very pleased with the quality that I'm getting from Guitar Anatomy. Um, couldn't have asked for a nicer neck and a sweeter looking body um, and I can't wait to try out the pickups and see how great those sound I'm missing the volume and tone knobs and I didn't order them yet because I wasn't sure if I was going to keep the, the pots that were in there uh, I thought maybe I'd change those out, so depending on what you use, the shaft might be slightly different. So I didn't want to order the wrong thing. Uh, so we'll see. No, no big deal. I can still turn them, even though it doesn't look nice without any knobs. But it'll get there. It'll get there. All right. So here we are. The last screw in the pick guard, so we can remove the tape. And I'm excited, man. I'm excited. When I start seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, man, this is going to be such a nice guitar. I can't wait to hear it. All right, so the last two screws we need to drill out here are these. And the only thing that I usually take care about is making sure that everything is pretty much perpendicular. Like, uh, not perpendicular, but parallel. And if you're really, really anal, you can actually use a ruler to make sure that everything's straight. Three and a half. Yeah, a little bit less than three and a half here. Which is about there. That should be perfect. So we'll just tape it down so it doesn't shift. And we'll make the hole. We gotta make sure that this is actually up against the pick guard as much as possible. And I don't know if you can see it here, probably not, but uh, it's that hole, the first hole here is actually in the shielding tape, just like we planned it. So we're going to be good to go. All right, like it. So let's drill the hole. And this one. And those are the very last two screws that we need to put in and um, 
Bob's Bob's going to be our uncle here in a minute. So, we just get, get those screws. So if you like what we're putting together in terms of information here, guys, please subscribe to the channel because we can use the support. Um, we don't always build guitars. We also review gear and uh, pedals and amps and multi-effects, all kinds of goodies. Um, pickups, you know, I'm big, at, I'm big into um, swapping out pickups and trying and demoing different types of pickups. Um, so if you're into any of that, then Addicted to Gear is a cool place to be. Plus, we have a great community, and we get together every Sunday, 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and we have a live show. So we talk about all the acquisitions that people are considering or have done over the week, uh, new stuff that's coming out, what's cool, what isn't, what people like, what they'd like to see on the channel, etc., etc. So it's a great place to stay in the know and get all of the great news in terms of gear and the music industry and uh, all the latest stuff. So Sunday, 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So guys, um, I think the guitar is pretty much done at this stage. There's not much else for me to do except to put the string uh, T on to put the um, to put the uh, strap buttons on and once we do that uh, we're ready to string up the guitar. So here we are at the stage in the game where the guitar is looking mighty sweet if I do say so myself. Uh, sweet looking Telecaster. This thing is gonna play great I can already tell. Uh, we're at the stage in the game now where we can put the strings on and uh, start working on the setup. The setup is key and is critical when it comes to um, having a guitar that plays really really well um, and I think this guitar is gonna be a rocker. So the setup is probably gonna be part of the next video because it's quite detailed there's a lot of stuff to do uh, but we're gonna start off by putting strings on this guitar perhaps I'll just start it off by stringing it up and installing the string T uh, because it's not in there right now and then we can look at setup with the neck the uh, you know the string height the uh, relief on the neck the adjustment of the saddles and intonation and all that great stuff and hopefully by the time we're done all of that I'll have some um, knobs that'll come in so we can actually finish the build and here how this guitar sounds. I'm really excited guys. Thank you for staying with me throughout the process. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, there's more to come, so stay tuned. So I hope you guys are getting something of value out of these videos. If you are, please consider subscribing to the channel. We can use all the subscribers we can get. We thank you for your support and please hit the bell icon because there'll be more great videos coming up right here, including the sound samples of the fuzzy duck pickups that we installed in this Telecaster. And I'll do a full review of the final build coming up in another video. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Tony, Addicted to Gear. See you soon.